Hi, my name is Pandora, and this is a quick video for all of those people who, like me, were a bit confused as they change over from a cricket to the black cat in terms of where will it cut. In the past, when I was using my Cricut, I may have used Design Studio to put the A, B, C, D on the screen in these areas. And then when I actually got to the physical mat, because I knew exactly where this was going to go because of the mat, I could simply place the paper on the mat in the area where I knew it would cut, and I could send it to cut, and that would be fine. And the black cat does do that, but it does it in a slightly different way, and it really doesn't care about where the mat is, and that's the one thing that it took me a while to understand, so I'm hopeful that this video may help some of you who are just changing over. I'm going to close this layer down now so I can work on another layer, and you do that by clicking on the lock down here. This means I can't now select anything in this layer. I can't move it, I can't change it, but it's in the way and I don't really want to see it. So we solve that by clicking on the eye. If you point it, it says toggle current layer visibility. It's basically an on-off switch. Click it closed, you can't see it. Click it open and you can. So I'm going to click it closed. I already have added another layer. I did that by going to layer, add new layer, and I called it Inkscape, but since I've already done that, to get to it, I come to this downward pointing triangle here, click on the downward pointing triangle, and then click on the Inkscape layer. As you can see, there's no difference. What I need to do now is click on the layer visibility, so I can now see it. However, still can't select it because it is locked. This is really useful when you're tracing things. Put the image you're tracing on one layer and lock it, then you can trace over it happily on another layer and you won't affect it. In order to be able to use this, I'm going to unlock it. So then if I want to, I can move these letters around if I don't like where they are. Now we can send it to sign cut and that would all work very well. This, by the way, is an A4 sheet of paper. One of the things that's quite useful is Inkscape doesn't actually care what size shape paper you have. What it will do is it will respond to exactly what you tell it. So if you want to change the size of paper, let's say, for instance, you're going to use 12 by 12 sheets. If you go to File and Document Properties, and let's just move this into the center. Move that over slightly just so you can see it. In here, we have the page size. The default unit for Inkscape, unless you choose differently, is to work in pixels. I tend to work in centimeters. I know other people work in millimeters and some people work in inches. Again, Inkscape's not fussy. It'll do whatever you tell it to do. So I'm going to work in centimeters and I'm going to select an A4 page. And down here, there's some numbers that don't make any sense, because here I can see that an A4 page should read 210 by 297. The answer is here on the side, again, it's pixels. I'm going to select centimeters. Now, if, for instance, I just swap this over to inches and inches, I can, if I want to, have a custom size. And if I was using 12 by 12 paper, I could literally type in 12 by 12, and you will see if I move this out of the way that the paper's shifted. So you can see that it's changed to a 12 by 12 sheet. Now, in theory, to select back, all I need to do is to click on the A4. But I don't know if you can see, it's not actually affecting it. Inkscape does this sometimes. I think it's some bug crawling around inside it. So here, if I change it to US letter and then to A4, it now comes back to the right size. Again, I'm going to change back to centimeters. It's just because that's what I'm used to working in. It's gone to landscape, which I don't want, so I'm going to put it back to portrait. So you can see it's really flexible. Whatever you do will be reflected in this window. There are some other areas about guides and grids, which we may cover in another video if anybody wants me to, but not just for now. So let's close that. If I now go to extensions, export, and send to sign cut, we'll get this window coming up. One of the more useful things that you can do is if you only want to cut letters that are pink, if you select the pink, it will simply cut the D out. Selecting the green will cut the C out, or the blue will be the, the B, or the red will be the A. 
and if you want to collect all the colors at the same time you can simply click on this button here and that will allow. The button above it is the wireframe button and that's actually quite useful. If I click on it once you can see the outline. This is really useful to check to make sure that all your cuts are going to be nice and neat and tidy. So again you can either have it on full fill or wireframe view, it's entirely up to you. The top button is also very interesting. If I select the red, at the moment mine appears not to be depressed. If I click on it once, you'll see that the A becomes full size. So if you're cutting letters out of a sheet of paper and you want to make sure that it cuts from the sheet of paper exactly where you place the letter, then leave this button up. Let me just switch all the colors back on again and if I click on the cut button, the scissors, which is the cut button, and here on the preview button, this is a preview of how it will cut. And you can, if you want to, click on the animate button and off we go showing you where and when it will cut. Let's just stop that. The big thing that I want you to pay attention to is down in this corner. This is your black cat cutter. So this would be, the top part would be your left hand side of your cutter as you were looking at it. The bottom part is the right hand side. And the thing that you need to know is that the cutter will start cutting from this corner here, this bottom left hand corner. Well, it's left hand as we look at the screen, but when you put the paper into the cutter, it's actually your bottom right hand corner. So it with this point here that I'm pointing to at the moment. So when this actually cuts, it will actually cut in landscape. Although I'm working in portrait, if you look at it relative to the picture, you can see that it will cut landscape. What I'm going to do is actually use a pen and draw this out so that you can see the difference. So for the purposes of this, here is my black cat mat and I put the piece of A4 paper on landscape. So I'm going to slide it into the cougar. I've got my clamps removed and I'm going to line it up roughly where I want it. The clamp here is on the red line at the edge. I'm going to drop the clamp and drop all three clamps. Now in order to move the black cat I need to use the online button which is the second button in here, the green one. So I'm going to click the online button once this sends it offline and now I'm going to use my arrow keys to position the blade housing just at this bottom right hand corner of my media. And I, So for those of you who have never used a pen to draw anything, you simply lift up the top of the black cat cuba, take out your blade housing and here, because I was using it earlier on, I already have my pen in the housing. I usually make sure that these knobs here are pain pointing forward. The little screws are pointing forward so that it doesn't get into the side of the carriage here. So using my trusty little piece of cardboard that Dawn gave me when I got the black cat, I pop the pen in, slide it down, and when it's just touching the mat, then I can tighten it up and take out my piece of card. Now you can see that actually you can't actually close the lid, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it up there. So, having got my blade in the correct position, I now set the origin and then set it online. And now I'm ready to cut. I'm going to leave the, the top open because then it won't interfere with the pen. All I need to do now is go into sign cut and send it to cut out, or in this case, draw. So we've seen that it will cut the letters out in landscape, although you're working in portrait. If you wanted to cut it in portrait on your machine, if we go extensions, export, send to sign cut, at the bottom of the window here we have a 90 degree, it says rotate image in 90 degree steps. If we click on it once, 
we will get the letters turned sideways. If we go to the Cut menu and click on the Preview, you can see now that this D will be where the A is in the right-hand edge of your cutting. And I'm going to cut that out using a pen, or so should I say, draw it out using a pen, just so you can see that that is so. So this is the way it comes in. If you send it to cut in this way, it will cut in landscape. If you use the 90 degree button, it will cut in portrait. And once you get your head around that idea, I think life becomes so much simpler. So now I'm going to use the zero button here to turn it back to portrait. What I want to consider now is what happens if you want to cut out four letters from individual pieces of paper. So, if we move across to the top here and we click on the red, you will find that the A becomes optimised. Now, if you wanted to cut it out of an A4 sheet of paper, as per our original setup, clicking on the top button will then put it in the top left-hand corner of the piece of paper, which, remember, will be the front left-hand corner because it will be cutting landscape. But if we click on the Optimize button again, we can now send it to Sign Cut once we have positioned our blade in this bottom corner. And to make that easier to understand, I'm going to put a little video in now. So, in order to cut four different colours, I need to have four different coloured pieces of paper, which I've plonked on the mat, as you can see, in a very haphazard fashion. I'm going to line it up roughly where I want it to be, and then put the clamps down across the board. I'm going to press the online button once to take it offline, and then I'm going to use the arrow keys just to position this exactly where I want it. Once I've got it exactly on the corner of the piece of paper that I want to use, I press the origin button once, and that says this is the start point. This is where I want you to start doing it from. I press the online button once to bring it back online, and then I send it to cut from sign cut. <coughs> Now it's finished cutting, I'm going to press the online button once to take it offline. Use the down arrow key here. Once to take it offline, move it across. Position it in the bottom right-hand corner, press the origin button once, press it online, and then send the C to cut. And although the light isn't great, hopefully now you can see I have the four letters in the four colours. So we're finally at the end. Four letters in four colours. And I hope it's helped you learn a little bit about where sign cut will or won't cut. If you have any requests, please feel free to email me at myrequest at btinternet.com. I hope you have a great day.